Farmed salmon is generally raised in two stages. First, the eggs are hatched and raised on land in freshwater tanks for 12 to 18 months, producing smolt, juvenile salmon. The smolt are then transferred to floating nets or pens in the ocean, where they are fed pellets and grow for another year or two. A single large sea pen can hold up to 90,000 fish. Modern harvesting techniques involve using wet well ships to transport the fish to the processing facility, and fish are usually killed by a blow to the head with a pneumatic piston, and bled at the gills. This tightly controlled harvesting process ensures that the quality of the meat is not needlessly degraded once the fish is dead. Most wild salmon are caught in purse sen nets and gill nets from the natural ocean habitat, usually as they swim along the shoreline to return to their home streams to spawn. Most commercial salmon boats have refrigerated seawater systems to keep the fish near freezing until delivery to a processing facility or tender. Quality control varies by region and individual vessels. Most fish freeze to death or suffocate in the fish holds. A single vessel in Alaska may catch more than 1 million pounds during a productive summer, the season when salmon spawn. Fish processing plants may produce fresh and frozen fillets, smoke, or can the fish. Entrails, bones, skin of the fish are often turned into fish meal. In some species of salmon, the eggs are of particular value. Many of the wild stocks of salmon are at times, enhanced, with hatchery fish. Just as fish farms are supplied with smolt, some streams and lakes are artificially supplied with smolt, this is called ranching. These juveniles mature in the wild and naturally return to the streams where they were stocked. These fish are essentially ranched fish, but are considered wild by the USDA and processors. Enhanced fisheries have been highly productive in Alaska, Russia and Japan. Wild-caught salmon are considered the fish industry equivalent of organic produce and are said to be more nutritionally and chemically pure than farmed salmon. The primary benefit of farmed salmon to consumers is in price and availability. The large-scale production achieved by fish farms makes salmon available to more consumers and drives down the price of wild-caught salmon. While Farm-raised salmon is certainly a healthy food, USDA nutritional data shows wild-caught salmon to be a healthier choice than farm-raised. Wild-caught salmon has less calories, less fat and saturated fat, more minerals, and less sodium than farm-raised salmon. Farm-raised salmon also contain higher concentrations of foreign chemicals, and without artificial dye, the meat would be a pale grey colour. However, farm-raised salmon are often known to have more omega-3 fatty acids.
general consensus among ocean and nutrition experts certainly lands on the side of wild-caught salmon as a healthier and more environmentally viable choice than farm-raised salmon. However, the aquaculture industry is taking steps to address the issues that plague the process. In other words, if farmed with extremely stringent quality conditions like in Norway, farmed salmon may be a better choice as it contains more omega-3. The inherent density of biomass in fish farming leads to common problems with parasites and disease among farmed fish, problems which often spread to nearby wild stocks. To combat these threats, farmed fish are often doused with antibiotics and drugs to control outbreaks. Sea lice and bacterial diseases have been found to wipe out significant portions of wild fish passing by. Even a relatively nascent bacterial development, when gone undetected, may be of serious health concerns to the consumer, especially when eaten raw. A major concern among critics of aquaculture are the fish that escape from pens during storms or accidents. If the fish are non-native species, they will compete with wild stocks. If they are native, they can breed with wild stocks or reduce genetic diversity. Farm fish are often fed fish meal and fish oil, which puts pressure on worldwide fisheries, as one third of all commercial fishing production goes towards fish meal and fish oil. Watch this eye-opening video about salmon when not farmed under proper conditions. While progress has been made in the aquaculture industry to address the pollution and contamination issues associated with fish farms, such as the development of antimicrobial copper alloys for netting, the consensus among ocean advocates remains that consumers should avoid most farmed salmon. In many areas of the world's oceans, commercial fishing has been poorly managed and has led to depleted stocks. While most Pacific salmon fisheries are well run, 2013 was the most productive commercial salmon season in Alaska's history, there is always the risk of mismanagement and depletion of wild stocks. Commercial fisheries also inevitably lead to small and large oil spills, and other environmental pressures that come with operating so many vehicles on the ocean. By catch, catching non-targeted fish and mammal species, is another issue, although by catch tends to be a relatively small issue with salmon purse seining and gill netting. Animal rights activists have taken issue with the slow death that many commercially caught fish face, however recent research suggests that salmon might lack an adequate nervous system to feel pain. The wild-caught salmon industry supports many Pacific coastal communities and provides a fairly widespread of the profits in the industry. The commercial salmon industry remains largely based on small and family-run boats. Most fish farms, on the other hand, are owned by large agricultural conglomerates and corporations. 
The current worldwide production of farmed and raised salmon would provide about one serving of salmon per year to each person on Earth, and 60 to 70 percent of that meat comes from aquaculture. If the various issues associated with aquaculture are mitigated, farmed salmon could fulfill its theoretical promise of easing pressure on wild stocks and providing an affordable and healthy source of protein around the world. By the time it reaches the cooler, it can be hard to tell much about the salmon in your supermarket seafood section. Some retailers include information about whether the fish was farmed or wild caught, domestic or imported, etc. But, as we're about to learn, the world of farmed fish is a nuanced one, and not all salmon is created equal. US-based commercial fisheries landed over 1 billion pound of salmon in 2017, the most recent year for which national totals are available. Alaskan fisheries account for 97% of total landings, bringing in £985,894,408. Because wild Atlantic salmon is an endangered species, fishing for it is prohibited in most of the world. This means that the overwhelming majority of wild-caught salmon sold in supermarkets are Pacific salmon, of which there are several distinct species, including pink, sockeye, coho, chum, and chinook. Wild-caught chinook salmon is highly prized, earning fishing fleets an average of $4.64 per pound. In 2017, pink salmon is the most plentiful variety, accounting for 49% of total landings, £495,321,971, but averaging only 33 cents per pound. Pacific salmon are usually caught as they migrate from the ocean back to their freshwater spawning grounds. While coho and chinook salmon will strike baited hooks or lures, sockeye and pink salmon, which eat primarily krill and plankton, generally won't. Commercial fisheries use two types of nets to catch the majority of the fish, purse sen nets and gill nets. These nets have common characteristics. They hang vertically in the water, stretched taut between a weighted bottom line and buoyed top line, forming a sort of curtain. In the case of gill nets, this curtain extends horizontally. Fish swim into the netting and become caught in the mesh, which is designed to allow the fish's head to fit through, but not its body. When the fish attempts to back out of the net, its gills become caught. Increased agitation and struggling typically results in the fish further entangling itself in the net. Purse sen nets are functionally similar to gill nets in that they are also suspended between a buoyed top line and weighted bottom line, but rather than being extended horizontally, they encircle the fish.
These nets are equipped with a lead line that allows the bottom of the net to be drawn together, much like a purse string, preventing the fish from escaping. Both purse send nets and gill nets are non-selective, meaning they capture anything that becomes caught in them, including protected species and marine mammals. Species that are frequently caught include bottlenose dolphins, humpback whales, and sea turtles. While it is sometimes possible to extricate and release these creatures in time for them to survive, they are often injured or even killed by the sheer weight of the catch or as a result of injuries sustained as they struggle against the net. Globally, commercial fisheries were responsible for the deaths of 650,000 whales, dolphins, and seals each year throughout the 1990s. As of 2018, farmed fish comprised roughly 73% of the world's salmon supply. When it comes to salmon, the term, farmed, generally refers to the practice of raising fish in marine cages, large enclosures located in sheltered waters, such as fjords or bays. Atlantic salmon are the primary species farmed, although small numbers of coho and chinook salmon are also produced. The biggest global producers of farmed Atlantic salmon are Norway, Chile, Scotland, and Canada. The salmon farming production process takes about three years. Initially, salmon are kept in freshwater systems. After about a year, they are relocated to seawater cages, where they undergo smaltification and, after roughly two more years, grow to harvest size. Salmon farms contain large numbers of fish in close proximity to natural marine ecosystems, this population density combined with the fact that the fish are unable to follow normal migratory patterns leads to high concentrations of waste material, polluting the water and adversely affecting local marine life. Cage culture captures none of the waste material, which is dispersed or settles below the cages in otherwise pristine coastal environments. Disease and parasites proliferate quickly in crowded net pens, posing a threat to wild populations. Sea lice, parasites that prey primarily on salmon, are becoming particularly problematic in this regard. A recent report from the Scottish Salmon Producers Organisation SSPO, shows that total sea lice numbers on Scottish salmon farms nearly doubled in a single year, April 2018 to April 2019. Sea lice outbreaks in caged salmon are often treated by adding pesticides to the fish feed. According According to NOAA, over 90% of the seafood consumed in the United States of America is imported. Salmon is one of the main imported species. 387,061 tons of fresh and frozen salmon, valued at $3.9 billion, was imported in 2018. The resources required to transport so many tons of fish over such great distances are astronomical, particularly when flown in fresh from Chile or Norway. The latest innovation in salmon farming, land-based systems use recirculating aquaculture to raise salmon in tanks. While this
This method is still relatively new. It is projected that land-based farms will produce 500,000 metric tons of salmon by 2026, an amount equivalent to 21% of 2017's global production, 2.3 million metric tons. Superior Fresh is the first land-based salmon producer in the US, and the largest aquaponic farm in the world. An aquaponic system is when a recirculating aquaculture system is combined with a hydroponic system. Aquaculture and aquaponics are related, but distinct. For our purposes, we will explain how our aquaponic farm works. We incubate our eggs in our on-site hatching room. Once they hatch, our fish are raised in a totally closed system where we control all inputs and outputs. They are fed an organic diet rich in fish meal and fish oil harvested from sustainable fisheries. Maintaining fish welfare is paramount throughout the production process. Sea lice and obligate pathogens are excluded to sustain fish health. Rotational velocity of the water in each tank is specific to the size of the fish, allowing them to swim continuously and receive proper exercise. Waste material is perpetually drawn out, while fresh, clean water is added, ensuring optimal water quality. When the fish are about six months old, we cue smultification by controlling the amount of light they receive to mimic nature. As the fish enter adolescence, they are moved to grout tanks where they continue growing for another year. Once they have reached 10 pounds, we harvest and process each fish by hand. Because the fish are raised in a controlled system, they are protected from diseases and environmental contaminants, such as PCBs and heavy metals, found in river and ocean environments. They're Therefore, our fish are never fed or treated with antibiotics or pesticides. Historically, access to fresh seafood has been limited to coastal regions, or has required transporting food thousands of miles. One of the benefits of raising salmon on land is that it can be done virtually anywhere, i.e., adjacent to major markets to supply local, fresh salmon, eliminating the need to transport the fish over long distances and vastly reducing its carbon footprint. Fish in controlled systems cannot escape and do not interact with or impact wild populations. In a typical land-based aquaculture system, the waste material produced by the fish must be removed, treated, and sometimes discharged. In aquaponics, that waste is repurposed. Nitrifying bacteria convert ammonia into nitrites and then nitrates, resulting in nutrient-rich water ideal for growing plants. Once the plants absorb the nutrients, clean water is returned to the fish house. At Superior Fresh, we produce 3 million pounds of organic leafy greens and 160,000 pounds of premium salmon each year, and we do it without wasting a single drop of water. 